What is up, everybody? It is Saturday. It is October 27th, and it is 11.56 a.m. here, West Coast time. We are a little bit early today. Normally, we start at noon. Sometimes we start a few minutes after noon. But you know what? I'm starting this early because we've got a lot of stuff to talk about today. There's actually a lot of news, a lot of notes, a lot of things are popping off, a lot of very, very interesting stuff, a lot of reviews of different things, just all kinds of stuff is popping off. And this is normally a shit show. You know, Saturdays are normally kind of cash, not a lot of news topics. Usually we're just kind of like twiddling our thumbs for the most part, but we've got crazy news today. So I am going to go ahead and dive right in, right off the bat. And yeah, in chat, Rudel Zavedno. I probably am completely mispronouncing that. I want to say Rudy, but that's an L, right? Rudel. So I'll just say Rudel might be completely off. But he is talking about the first user review for Samsung Odyssey Plus. Yes, we do have a user review. This is on the virtual reality subreddit. This is Oli Ran, my Samsung Odyssey Plus review. And you know what? I haven't read this entire thing over and over a few different times. I've kind of glanced at it. Looks to be an absolutely glowing review of the Odyssey Plus. We've been waiting, we've been wondering what the hell is going on with this Samsung Odyssey Plus. Is it actually available or not? Because supposedly it was available on October 22nd, but nobody could find one anywhere. But this guy has found one. He grabbed one from a brick and mortar Microsoft store and he's been playing around with it for the past couple of hours. He is a Rift owner, a Vive owner. He's even tried the original Odyssey and he has his breakdown on this. And so I'm going to go ahead and we'll go over a couple of the points that he's talking about. For me, this is the most comfortable headset I have tried. Prior to this, I would say the Rift wins. The headset feels light and has good weight distribution. The foam material feels very high quality. And overall, it feels more premium than either the Vive or the Rift. And then when he goes to the visuals, he says the sweet spot is much bigger and the image is more consistently clear and there is no no screen door effect at all i've looked hard and i can't see any if i really try to see then i can see very tiny pixels but only when staring at pure white the extra resolution helps compared to vive and rift the god rays are on par with the vive and are much less intense than the rifts the biggest downside to the lenses I clearly see the concentric circles from the Fresnel lenses. That's kind of a downer there. The audio is superb. The Rift has great audios, but the Samsung Odyssey Plus built-in headphones are really a step beyond. Tracking. Okay, here is where it all falls apart. No, it doesn't all fall apart, but this is the Achilles heel for the entire Windows Mixed Reality platform is the tracking is not absolutely flawless. So here's what he's saying. Obviously, the controllers will get lost to tracking if you hold them behind your head. Tracking will also be poor in general if the lights are very low. Except for those two cases, the tracking seems to work great so far. So his overall impression, this is his favorite headset out there it's not a general it's not a generational leap but it is clearly an improvement over all the current headsets out there of course i'm guessing this guy has not obviously tried a 5k plus very few of us have tried a 5k plus so that's kind of breaking news someone actually getting their gd hands their gosh darn hands on an actual samsung odyssey putting it through its paces and giving us a bit of a breakdown. Now, this dude's only had it for an hour or so, 
it's one random dude on Reddit. But like I've always said, if you can't believe a rando on Reddit, who the hell can you believe? Pretty much nobody, right? Yeah, we do need some more reviews to come in, but this is exciting. This is interesting. Now, Charles Van Nolan is saying, hey, man, by the way, you can buy an original Odyssey for 350 bucks. You save yourself 150 off what this guy just did. But is that the way you want to go? You want to eliminate screen door effect, the so-called elimination. Now, this guy's saying he can only see it on white backgrounds if he looks very, very hard on a pure white background. I think this would be super interesting because I play a lot of Windlands 2 and on certain heads on on certain games like Windlands 2 where it's very vibrant very colorful and very simplistic graphics, that's where you actually notice that screen door. You see that screen door. And it would be cool to try Windlands 2 on an Odyssey Plus and know, oh my God, does it really look like one solid color or do I see that screen door there? So I'm interested in it. This has piqued my interest. Um, in more ways than one, because if you do go down the 5K plus road, you probably need uh, a video card upgrade, right? And so if you don't want to do a video card up upgrade, and if you want to save a couple hundred bucks as well, plus you don't need base stations, you get controllers, you got the inside out tracking, the Samsung Odyssey is a consideration. So it is tempting. It is out there. James Davis 911 says, screw screen door effect. It can just get the hell out of Dodge. And yeah, I'm kind of inclined to agree with that. Um, so you know what? We do have some news today. Like I said, there is actual legitimate breaking news that is going on today. So let me go ahead and get to one of the stories that we have today. And so, Blade and Sorcery. Now, this is the beta reveal. This trailer looks somewhat familiar, but let's go ahead and check this out because this is a, a, a new trailer. Let's check this out. All right, that is Blade and Sorcery. And not only do we have this new trailer, but we do have a Steam page. We do have a release date. December 14th, the developer is Warp Frog. And Blade and Sorcery, VR, Fantasy, Sword Fighting, it is in the house. Blade and Sorcery is built for VR, medieval fantasy sandbox with full physics driven melee, ranged, and magic combat. Become a powerful warrior, a ranger, or a sorcerer and devastate your enemies. And ouch, that doesn't, that would really hurt. If you got stabbed right there in that part of your back, Holy crap, would that hurt? That would be painful as all hell. Uh, so yeah, this is Blade and Source. We, we got a brand new trailer. We got a release date. This is December 14th. This does look pretty good. And oh my goodness, is it an assault of dungeon crawlers. Now this one appears to be more melee focused, almost like Gorn in certain ways in terms of how melee focused it is and how bloody it is. But this is much more realistic than Gorn. This is going for a realistic look. Um, let me switch over here back to the Steam page. 
And you can see, you know, just looking at this screenshots, it's kind of got this gladiator style look to it, very similar to Gorn in that respect. But it also does have this medieval thing going on. And, you know, magic, mages, sword play, all kinds of stuff is going on here. Um, but, you know, we do have a, that's an interesting shot right there. We do have kind of an overabundance of these kind of games right now. Now that kind of has that gladiator look right there, which is a bit interesting. We're, we're kind of dreaming of the day where we can truly be a gladiator, very similar to the gladiator movie and maybe just as bloody as the gladiator movie and blade and sorcery is entering early access in december so that is exciting it's exciting news it's just another another game that is popping out there um and there's a story about this on reddit as well there's going to be a, clo a closed beta is going to start today and if everything goes well early access begins december 2018 and yeah, it has December 14th on here on the uh, Steam page. So that's exciting. I might try to get into this closed beta, see if I can check it out. Uh, don't know if you have to be under an NDA and you can't really talk about it or what. But one of the coolest things about this game, like, like I'm just looking at the trailer here, and it really is about the physics. Because I can tell you what, when you get into a VR game, and if the physics and things are behaving somewhat realistically it really adds considerable more immersion to the overall scenario there so definitely interested in that now let's get into another topic that we can talk about today and that of course is zero caliber vr zero caliber vr yeah we were waiting for the demo for zero caliber vr for a fortnight it seemed like we were waiting for this demo and it finally arrived and you know what i tried it yesterday i'm sure a lot of you guys tried this yesterday and i gotta say man this one didn't work too good for me okay i am not going to be coming away from this with a lot of positive viewpoints now i gotta couch the whole thing and say though that the these games just it's not my kind of bag. I'm going to be honest with you. Not my kind of bag. Because here's the deal with Zero, Zero Caliber, okay? So the demo had a lot of hype. Downloaded the demo. Got into the demo. And my first impression of it was, I was you're kind of in this menu area. And you're kind of walking around. And it has smooth locomotion. And it's very fast. So you can get to where you're going very quickly. That's something I like. The smooth locomotion worked pretty well and I really did like that and also when I was in this menu area over in the corner behind a glass wall you could see some people were sitting at a table they're kind of talking and, at, and stuff and from a distance in the very beginning I was looking over there and I was like wow that almost looks like video footage like of humans talking like they're moving kind of realistically and i'm seeing them from far away and there was this one bald guy that was sitting at the table everybody else was like in military clothes but he wasn't and he was kind of moving around i was like wow that looks pretty realistic of course then i get a bit closer and they're all definitely, you know, computer animated characters. It's not full motion video or anything like that. But I was kind of impressed by that. And graphically, overall, I will say that I was impressed with the graphics of this game for the most part. I thought they were impressive. There is a lot of aliasing that is going on. A lot of shimmering. And I didn't actually get into the options and try to change a bunch of things around. So I'm not sure if you can change a number of settings. Also, I'm still not super sampling yet. I have not begun the era of super sampling yet. So maybe that could kind of take away a little bit of a, the alias scene. There is the shimmering. There is the alias scene on the edges of everything. But it looks pretty bright and colorful. And it moves very quickly and very fast. Now, here's where it all goes bad for me. Where this demo went bad is I was like grabbing guns and stuff and I kept like dropping guns or I would shoot the gun a couple of times and it would fly out of my hand. 
And, you know, this is one of these games. And, and again, I'm not the target market for this game. Like, the target market for this game is somebody that is absolutely addicted to Onward. They play Pavlov. They play Onward. They play Standout. And they're looking for this kind of game. And it is all about multiplayer for them. They want to be in a multiplayer game like this and play this. And this is their jam. And it's not really my jam. I prefer a single-player game. I don't like guns that fall out of my hands. And uh, I don't like having to like load clips and stuff and, and pull back uh, the chamber and do all these things. Unless it's super easy and it's right there. And see, the thing that I've noticed with a lot of these games is you're dropping the guns. They're falling on the ground. You're trying to pick up the gun. But what this game has is it has inverse kinematics for your shoulders and your arms and for your full body. And when you're looking down, like if you dropped your gun on the ground and you're trying to pick up your gun, well, your body is like coming out here. You, you barely can even see your gun and you're trying to pick it up and you're trying to grab it. I'm trying to grab my gun. I'm trying to grab my gun. It won't let me. Okay, finally, finally, it let me grab my gun. Did anybody else have that issue with this game? Because I had that issue. But again, this is not my thing. Okay, the other thing I'll say about this is... It's 100% dialed in for HTC Vive players. Like throughout this menu system and throughout like the tutorial, it is showing HTC Vive wands and it's telling you do this to to climb across, you know, this this little empty area here. You know, you you want to grab the triggers or whatever. And I felt like just everything seemed off to me and it did not seem like it was dialed in for Oculus Rift whatsoever. Um as long as all the buttons like translate okay, it's not that big of a deal. And the shooting and stuff, yeah, I got in there. I was in a, you know, I got shot immediately. I was dying immediately. Um, so I don't know. In chat, a lot of people say that it's very good. Like Phil Yarn says, I had to up my super sampling on this game. Oculus Tool Tray is your friend, Anthony. Yeah, I just haven't started doing that yet. I know I probably need to do it. And Fluke says he quite liked the Zero Caliber demo. It was certainly rough in places, but it had something about it that clicked with me. I I mean, there were certain things. I, I did like the bright, colorful graphics. I did like how quick the movement is in terms of smooth locomotion. You know, you're quickly bada boom in places. I just have a thing with some of these games where some of these games, what they do is you pick up the gun, you can drop the gun, you can load the clip, you can drop the clip, and you can like reload your gun and do all of that stuff. And I understand why they're doing that, that they're doing that for the added realism. But the problem is if, if the guns start falling on the ground and if the clips start falling on the ground and you can't pick them up for some reason. Like I had, I was using this one gun, I dropped it and it basically disappeared. And I didn't know how to get beyond the, the part where I was, you know? So you'll see these guns, it has all these add-ons. Again, I'm a complete and utter noob. If I was like some kind of onward veteran or a Pavlov veteran, I'm sure I would get into this game. I'd be loading my clips all the right way. I'd kind of figure out the, the belt thing and, and I would get over the inverse kinematics and all of that. And I would adapt to that really quick. I did not adapt to this very well at all. Um, will I give it another chance? Sure, why not? Why not give it another chance? And that, that actually brings us into the next thing that I wanted to get into real quick. So let me go ahead and put a different trailer on right here. Um, <clears throat> so sometimes we are going to revisit games. You guys might remember yesterday, Paradise Decay was in chat and he was saying that apparently Witching Tower had been fixed. That whatever the performance issues, whatever the situations that were going on with Witching Tower, that it had been fixed. That very first time that I got in Witching Tower, it was not good. It was stuttery. There were lots of issues. And I was not a fan of Witching Tower. I was only a fan of the $19.99 price point. And I was a fan of the graphics and some of the production value. 
but there was just so much stutter, I couldn't enjoy anything. So I went back into the Witching Tower VR last night, and you know what? It really was like a night and day difference. It was a big change. So Daily Magic Productions, they've done something. They've gone in here, and they've fixed something. The stuttering appears to be mostly gone. The The issues that I had with it are mostly fixed. Now, does that mean it is all sunshine and rainbows? No, that doesn't. In fact, I made some positives and negatives about this game. Okay, so on the positive side, performance is actually quite a bit better. No more constant stuttering. So that's the big one right there. The other thing I'll say on the positive side is in certain spots, there really is some decent production value in this game. You'll do certain things in this game that will trigger a certain scenario, and you're like, wow, that's kind of like a AAA thing that they just did right there. But it's in bit and bits and pieces. It's not the entire game. There's certain things that will happen where you're like, oh, that's nice. That's really AAA of you to do that. But it doesn't happen throughout the entire game. But there are some nice little spots of very good production value. And then the other thing I'll say is, is in certain situations, the graphics look pretty darn good. The graphics look pretty nice and pretty detailed in certain situations. Again, it's kind of a hit and miss. You'll be looking at it, you'll be like, oh, the graphics look really nice there. And then sometimes you'll look at it and be like, oh, it's just kind of average at best. And now let's go to the negatives. The negatives are, um, they fix that stuttering, but as I'm moving around this game and I'm using free locomotion, we were just talking about the free locomotion in the Zero Caliber demo. And in the Zero Caliber demo, you're moving around fast as can be and you don't get stuck on geometry, at least I didn't notice that very much, but in Witching Tower VR, it does kind of feel like teleportation is the way the game was designed, and you can use the free locomotion, but be understanding of the fact that you're occasionally gonna get stuck on some stuff a little bit, and you kind of have to back out of it and move again. Also, I will say the snap turning. Now, this one was really bizarro to me. The snap turning, and this is for me, so I don't know if this is for everybody, but it only worked if I was pressing, let me turn down the volume. I don't know if the volume is, is loud here on this trailer. Um, but the snap turning, I would turn it to the right and boom, it would snap turn. If I tried to turn left, nothing happened. So I could only go you know, you could only go that way, which is really, it was really weird. I don't know if that was just for me, some kind of weird issue that I'm having, or if everybody is suffering from that. But that's a, a pretty significant error because you want to be able to quickly bounce this way or that way with a quick flick of your thumb. You should be able to bounce in either direction and snap turn quick and accurately. And I could only snap turn to the right. Very weird there. The combat. The combat is still leaving a lot to be desired, in my opinion. I did get the bow. I got the sword. I've battled some of the skeletons. And graphically, you know, the skeletons are kind of cool because they kind of remind me of those old Sinbad movies. Do you guys remember those old Sinbad movies from the 70s where they had the animated skeletons and it was all stop motion, Harry, Harry Housen, whatever, or whatever it's called? You know, it was that old effect, right? And uh, the skeletons in this kind of remind me of that a little bit. Now, the bow mechanics, the bow did not feel good to me, though. I'm so spoiled by In Death and by all the games that do bow right. Like, Carnage Chronicles has a good bow. This is not a good bow. It doesn't feel good. The bow mechanics do not feel good to me. The sword is just pretty much hackathon. So, you know, you can hack at these at these uh, killer dogs, you can hack at the bats, and you could hack at the skeleton monsters that are coming at you. There is some nice special effects and sound, and there's lots of voice work. So there is some good things going on in here. So anyway, I just wanted to report back on Witching Tower VR and say, you know what, it's a lot better than I initially thought it was from a performance standpoint, and it is $20. It's not super expensive. It is another dungeon crawler. If you've covered 
every square centimeter of Carnage Chronicles and Vanishing Realms and all the other high-end dungeon crawlers, and you desperately need another dungeon crawler, although, goddamn, are we getting hammered with these things? We got Runes coming up on November 14th. It's kind of a dungeon crawler. And we got that other game that is uh, the Blade and Sorcery, December 14th. So we just get hammered, man. When it comes to VR gaming, it's all about wave shooters, it's all about horror games, and it's all about dungeon crawlers and puzzle games. We've got a million of them. So checking in in chat. Yeah, Phil Yarn is in chat. Tom Lloyd has, hasn't has been around, but he's here. Charles Van Nolan is actually watching the stream in his Oculus Go. That is pretty sweet. Uh, James Davis 911 is checking in. He He's uh, responding to Phil Yarn, and he says, I will say I didn't really like fighting those bots in Zero Caliber, but I think that was mainly due to the touch controls being basically backwards for grabbing, and I couldn't respond. Yeah, it just didn't feel good on an Oculus Rift, in my opinion. Phil Yarn, are you playing this on an Oculus Rift? What are you playing on? Oh, they didn't hear the trailer at all. Sometimes my trailers are way too loud. Sometimes they're super quiet. The main concern I have with the trailer is sometimes there will be a guy talking and they're talking hell loud and you can't even hear me talk. So I got to concern myself with that. Uh, but that is Witching Tower VR. It is maybe something to take a look at once again. Okay, you know what? We've got more news. There's more breaking stuff that is going on, I believe. Uh, let's see. What else did I want to get into? Oh, there's this. Okay. Okay. I'm going to put this footage on the screen. I am going to have to resize this. Now, this is at like TwitchCon or something here. This is Borderlands 2 VR. I don't know if there's any sound. Uh, there is some sound. Okay, so this is Borderlands 2 VR. This is off-screen footage, and they are playing this on PlayStation VR. And, of course, this is coming out December 14th, I believe, is the date for this. So we got... Uh, Blade and Sorcery and Borderlands 2 coming on the same day, supposedly. A lot of good stuff going on in VR, guys. A lot of games are coming out. I guess PC VR isn't dead after all, is it? Uh, so Borderlands 2 VR, I mean, it's looking pretty good. Just, you know, the second screen is never like drop dead gorgeous beautiful, but looks pretty good here. Uh, I mean, we can't get much of an impression here, but I mean, it is Borderlands 2. It looks very colorful, and uh, the gameplay looks pretty fast and frenetic. So this will probably work well on PlayStation VR. I'm definitely excited about it. It does look pretty good. Crunchy says, portrait video again. Well, this is the type of shit that we get when it's somebody at a con or at some kind of convention or whatever, and they're just grabbing off-camera footage. They're not going to have their high-end camcorder with them or whatever video recording device. They're just going to record it on their phone or whatever, and this is what we're going to get out of here. Um... So where do they have the Odyssey Plus? That is Min J Sheen checking in. And you know what? At your local brick and mortar Microsoft store. That is where somebody went ahead and grabbed. Let me go ahead and get off of this now. We've been on that for a minute. You know what I'll put on real quick here is this game right here. Trivia Battle VR. Let me go ahead and resize this because that other video screwed it up. Okay. So this is free to play. And I was saying, what what happened to my video there? It just moved. Okay, stay in your spot. Okay, this is free to play. And I was telling everybody that I was going to give this a shot. I was going to try this out. And I did actually try this out. And it's not too bad. It's 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 kind of lame. You know, it's it's not much ado about nothing. But what I'll what I'll say with this is, if you're kind of bored and you want to try something new. You could try this out for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, a half hour, whatever, and it's not too bad. It's, it's you know, the, the graphics are colorful and cheerful. You basically are just doing this kind of trivia game show thing, and it works halfway decent. So nothing very special there, but I will say it's certainly worth a try if you're looking for something new. It is free. That is uh, Trivia VR. What is the name for this? Uh, VR Trivia Battle. Yeah, it's free to play. It does have a demo. Um, this is a Steam page over here. Five user reviews. And I'll just say it's worth 
if you know if you want to kill 25 minutes and try a different kind of a thing if you haven't tried any kind of trivia game show style vr game it's something you could try not too bad halfway decent tried it it was okay uh so that is trivia battle vr okay so i've basically covered i think most of the stuff that i really wanted to get into today in terms of like breaking news and stuff but now what we could do is we could go ahead and bounce over to the subreddits see what's going on see what other news stories there are to get at okay i'm going to go ahead and switch over and so this is the vive subreddit and one of the big stories out there is certainly this odyssey plus review it sounds incredibly encouraging but we'd like to see reviews from maybe about seven or eight different people because it's basically one guy right now as far as we know so we got a review of one guy he is super impressed super happy about the odyssey plus you know speaking of the odyssey plus steve from vr roundtable i believe he's ordered one of these so he's going to be getting his hands on one of these very soon maybe he should have just tried to drive to his local brick and mortar microsoft store because they might actually have them in stock ready to go you know what kind of sucks if i got an odyssey plus sent to me right now i would not be able to use it until i upgraded my motherboard and my cpu my CPU and motherboard are from 2011, and I believe all the Microsoft Mixed Reality headsets require some of these instruction sets that are only with like newer, or not newer CPUs, but not ancient CPUs. So I'd have to, I'd have, I'd actually have to do a quick little upgrade before I can even try an Odyssey Plus. Um, let's see what else is going on over here. Of course, that rock star thing, we talked about that yesterday. This guy's one saying that in, this guy's saying in the game transference, when you shake items, they sound strangely accurate. And I don't know, I can't really remember that. Here's the zero caliber VR demo. A lot of people talking about this. And I'm wondering if a lot of people really like the demo or they seem to be disappointed by the demo. Because I don't know. Um, <clears throat> It seems kind of a mixed bag, I'd have to say. I think if you're hardcore into these kind of games and you adapt to it pretty quickly, you're probably going to like it. If you're like me and you're kind of a noob to these type of games, you're probably going to hate it and have a lot. Well, also, if you're on a Vive, maybe the controls just simply work better on Vive, period. It could be a situation like that. Um, so that's kind of what is going on over there on the Vive subreddit. Let's go ahead and check out Oculus real quick. Um, on Oculus, uh, well, they're saying Zero Caliber has the best grenade throwing feeling. I did throw a grenade. I don't really remember it feeling like super great, but there is that. Red Matter, guys. So Red Matter is coming to Steam at some point in uh, the month of November. It's coming to Steam. That was our big news yesterday. But guess what? If you're on Oculus, you can grab Red Matter for 18 bucks. Not a bad deal. So it is one of the deals, one of the daily deals. Um, definitely one of my favorite games on Oculus. I think it's a really good game. Uh, it just worked really well for me. I liked Red Matter. So for that price, it is $13.49 on the pounds if you are in the UK. Pretty good deal. Um, trying to see what else we might have going on over here. That's pretty much it on some of the main stories that are going on let me check psvr real quick and then we'll bounce back to chat yeah so the number one topic on the psvr subreddit is what we've already seen it's this borderlands 2 off-screen footage right here that is the number one topic because people are excited they want to play borderlands 2 on their playstation vr and here's a guy checking in he played the demo at twitchcon let's go ahead let me pop into this real quick um <clears throat> for starters the game looks a little fuzzy he played it on a version 2 headset on an original playstation 4 lacking that hard detail of the original it was so no well known for but that could be because of the vr porting or that it's a demo well the one thing i'd wonder about this being blurry is if you're at some kind of like TwitchCon or whatever, you're at some kind of convention and you're getting a demo, hopefully this guy moved it up and down 
to to the perfect point because if you have if you put a PSVR headset on your on your head and you have it slightly up or down it could be blurry as hell. So hopefully this guy had it dialed in before he tried it. He says there is a zoom option. If you hit L2, a small camera pops up to allow you to, to do close up accurate shots. Um, and there's a slow down feature. There was a rep from 2K games there. He says this game is kind of an experiment. He says if it does well, they may look into bringing other games into VR. GTA 5, anyone? Um, and he played Tetris. He played uh, Tetris Effect in VR. The blocks are nothing special, but the particle effects that happen all around you when knocking lines down are absolutely gorgeous. So that is some interesting information that is going on on the PlayStation VR subreddit. Okay, let me go ahead and turn this down. We also had some other PSVR news. I mean, Kev Gret already broke this news yesterday, but I just wanted to mention this again. Tetris Effect is getting a limited time demo ahead of launch on PS4 and PlayStation VR. And one of the things that I didn't realize, like Kev Gret was saying, okay, this demo is going to be available on November 1st, and it's only going to be available for a couple of days. Now, what I didn't realize is the demo is only going to work for a couple of days. I thought maybe you only had a couple of days to grab it, but actually it's only going to work for a couple of days. So basically you want to grab this on November 1st and you'll be able to play it up until November 5th. So you're going to be able to play it for a couple of days right before the game launches and then the demo basically self-destructs. So that is the situation with Tetris Effect. So we got a lot of stuff going on in the VR world today on a Saturday, which is normally a relatively slow day. All right, let's go ahead and see what folks are talking about over here on chat. And uh, let's see, um, Conrad Lawrence is wondering if there's headset aiming. Is he wondering about that for Borderlands? Hopefully not. Um, and let's see. Conrad Lawrence says, if I can't aim with my hands in Borderlands VR, I might pass on it. You know, I mean, most, I wonder how they're going to do the controls. Are you using a DualShock 4? Because I think if you're using a DualShock 4, you're just going to, yeah, I don't know how the controls are going to work exactly. That's interesting because if you're not using move controllers and moving your hands around like that, will it be tied to your head kind of? Um, that would be interesting. Um, and so, yeah, a lot of people in chat are talking about stuff that is they're responding to other people talking about stuff in chat. So nothing for me to really read over there. OK, what we can do, though, is we can go ahead and see what the latest news is on Upload VR. And so Onward is going to have an update that is adding Spec Ops Halloween mode and pistol attachments. Was somebody saying that Onward was free to play for this weekend or something like that? I thought I heard something about Onward being free to play for a weekend, or maybe it was a different game. Um, but anyway, they do have this little Halloween mode, which is kind of cool. Um, so there is that. Um, Nightmare on Oculus Cell offers Halloween savings for Rift, Go, and Gear VR. So Oculus is having a deal with some Halloween deals. Nightmare and Oculus sell. Let's see. Can we go directly to it and see all the deals? Let's check this out. It's taking a little while for this to load up. Alrighty. Okay, so Nightmare on Oculus. So there's the Red Matter deal, of course. That is 18 bucks. Um trying to see some more deals here oh they have a combo pack where you get Arctica one you get in death and edge of nowhere for 45 bucks that's not too bad here's another combo pack with wilson's heart paranormal uh paranormal activity and duck season those are combined in death is on a minor sale for 27 bucks remember in death raised its price you guys should have bought in death a long time ago arizona sunshine is 26 bucks that's not really that major of a deal 18 bucks for edge of nowhere it doesn't normally go on sale very much 
Um, Seeking Dawn is $10 off. Sarianto, yeah, you know, I don't know. None of these deals are really, really jumping at me. Killing Floor Incursion for 20 bucks, especially if you already have an Oculus Rift and you've never played that. That works really well on Oculus. It was an Oculus exclusive for a minute, and it runs very well. That's a good deal. Exorcist Legion VR, I think this is just one chapter for 4 bucks. So I don't know. I don't think any of these, like none of these deals are like blowing me away by any stretch. Dead Hungry is pretty fun. I actually like Dead Hungry. Um, Dread Halls is a great game. That's eight bucks. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'd probably say the best deal of the bunch is probably uh, Killing Floor Incursion. I think that's probably one of the better deals out here. Uh, but anyway, that is the sale that is going on over there on Oculus. Let's see what folks are talking about. Um, they mentioned Borderlands 2 will have an option for hand aiming and Onward is supposed to be free to play right now. Okay. Yeah. I heard something about Onward being free. So it might be, yeah, Oculus has free to play this entire weekend. And I wonder, can you get into it and also see that Halloween stuff as well? Because you know what? Maybe I should try to go into Onward. Although I think I'd have to re-download it. And I got a number of things that are going on that I might not be able to get around to it. But I almost, I kind of want to try Onward again because I had fun with it. Even though I'm not very good, Onward, like I didn't have any of the difficulties that I had with like Zero Caliber and zero killed and, and and just a lot of these other games just don't seem to be working very well for me but onward the last time i played onward i mean i wasn't good but it worked perfectly fine like it was very smooth it worked well i had no problems controlling the game or anything so maybe that's something i should check out if i can get an opportunity and download that and retry that out especially now you know with the 1080 ti probably a little bit better performance as well of course um so let's go ahead and bounce back over to upload vr a couple other news stories we might want to mention cyber shoes impressions a convincing alternative for movement in vr i still don't believe that this product is for me but i do believe it is a product for people out there there are people out there that they're fine they can sit down and they're totally fine with sitting down and playing a game i want the stand-up immersion so for me it's a non-starter but it does seem like it could be a good option for some people out there and then the newest version of the pimax controllers look a lot like valve's early knuckle prototypes early knuckles prototypes these actually look kind of halfway decent the question is when will they actually be available like when are you actually going to get your hands on this stuff and then another big question with pimax is what happens if something goes wrong how much is a backup pair of controllers well I, you know i guess the good news is you could just use vive wands you can use 1.0 base stations if you want to as well right so i guess you know uh, although vive wands are expensive as hell if you wanted to buy some backups of those um and then of course yesterday we did find out that ace combat 7 while while it, it appears to be a very limited amount of vr related gameplay supposedly it's really freaking good so that's pretty cool there with ace combat 7 my recommendation is gamefly that crap <laughs> you know gamefly it red box all of those kinds of things um and then a quick check over at road to vr seeking dawn is going to have this free to play edition next week and it's also going to have a little bit of a spooky halloween theme so i think a lot of games are going to do this halloween thing because you know what if they do some funky little halloween thing they're going to get mentioned on road to vr they're going to get mentioned on upload vr and most importantly they're going to get mentioned on this show and that translates to thousands of of new sales so they got to do this they want to hype up their halloween stuff um and then runes i'm really hyped on runes i really like i'm looking forward to runes that's coming november 14th i'm kind of hyped on that and then the same stories that we saw yesterday so nothing else is going on over there okay let's go ahead and head back over to chat Charles Van Nolan says, Onward is rad. Kid Toke says, I got to finish building my gun stock thing. And Street Wax TV, I don't think I've seen this guy in chat before. He says, do you think the quest 
will outsell PlayStation VR. Well, PlayStation VR, it already has a 3 million person head start. It has a huge catalog of games. Um, it'll be very difficult for the Quest to outsell PlayStation VR anytime in the near future. I think the better question is, will the Quest outsell PlayStation VR 2? I think that is a better question. It's going to be difficult. Now, you have some people like Super Data, Super Data, whatever. They were saying that they believe the Oculus Quest is going to sell 1 million, 1 million in its first year of availability. And that is incredibly bullish. And for that to happen, Oculus is going to have to absolutely hammer the marketing. And they can do that. They have Facebook. They could hammer the marketing all over Facebook. They can pay for high-end television commercials that appear uh, during The Voice and during NFL games and stuff like that. So if Oculus wants to really double down on the Oculus Quest and advertise the living hell out of it, what Oculus can hope for is that when we get to Christmas 2019, that it will be the hot Christmas gift of 2019. I'm sure Oculus is kind of hoping the Oculus Go is going to be a hot Christmas gift this year. And it probably should be a hot Christmas gift this year because the Oculus Go is a damn fine piece of tech right there. It's working really good. Let me go ahead and grab a different trailer to throw on. I, I pretty much jump in my Oculus Go almost daily. Um, just because there's a lot of good stuff going on with the Oculus Go. I'm going to go ahead and throw on Jet Island. All right, uh, Conrad Lawrence says, Why bullish? PSVR sold nearly a million in just a few months. Did it really? Did it really? I thought it took it like seven or eight months. And Oculus, I mean, PlayStation has a name and it's a name brand and people already owned a PlayStation 4. So it's going to be interesting. It'll be interesting to see. I don't know. I just think, I think 1 million selling 1 million quests, like in the, it, when it's available for 365 days, yes. But if they're talking about the calendar year of 2018, that's going to be pretty difficult. Conrad Lawrence says Oculus is a name as well. It's a well-known name, but it's not PlayStation. Like everybody knows PlayStation. It's known worldwide. Oculus is building that brand name. And Facebook can market the hell out of it if they choose to. And they probably are. And if there's enough TV advertisements, you know, maybe, maybe. It's still pretty freaking ambitious, guys. It's still 399 bucks. It's still 400 bucks. It's not going to be super easy. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I'm hoping they sell a million. I just don't know that it's going to be that easy to get away with it. Uh, Phil Yarn is back. He had to run four red lights and sideswiped two old ladies just to make it home to enjoy the show. And Phil Yarn, apologies, the show has now ended. No, no, yeah, Phil Yarn, dude, don't worry. You can always watch the archived versions later. It's not that big of a deal. Fluke says PSVR took four months to sell one million, million judging by an old uh, Verge article. Um, well, PSVR came out on October 13th. It was right before Christmas. You know, it was a pretty hype thing. And how many people owned a PlayStation 4 that first year? Like 60 million people. So you had this built-in audience of 60 million that were kind of tempted because they already had what they needed. All they had to grab was this PSVR bundle. They could get in. They could start playing. And they did have the 299 version, right, that just came with the controller if somebody already somehow happened to have a camera already. This is going to be 399 It's all in one. It's completely wireless. It's all built in. It's going to be a good advertising message. And they're going to have the two, you know, six degrees of freedom controllers. And I'm sure they're going to make some really cool advertisements with people going, whoa, bro, you know, doing the doing the Matrix and going like way down low and playing Beat Saber and doing all that stuff. So they're going to try to advertise the crap out of it. You know what? Maybe... Maybe I'm a bit too bearish on it. Maybe they should bang out one million of these things. I hope they do. It would be great. I think it would be really good for the VR industry in general. Uh, let's see. What else can I go to? Well, I've pretty much covered everything here. Um, 
Okay, Metal Machine 80, is there a VR Game Rankings Discord channel? And you know what is hella funny? Phil Yearn, I'm glad you're back. Because Phil Yarn kept posting these messages yesterday. I did. I noticed one of them live, and then I noticed both of them when I was doing some timestamps. And Phil Yarn is like, Anthony, Discord. Like, Anthony, when are you going to talk about Discord? Okay, so here's the deal on the Discord thing. There is a new YouTube channel, guys. I have a new logo. There's going to be a new channel, and we're going to move to it soon. Now, the problem that I'm having is... I've, I had somebody work on the logo for me, and I was waiting. The guy got me the logo, but he didn't get me a transparent version of it that I could put on any kind of background. It's it's on a specific background, and so I'm waiting for this guy. Basically, it's coming. It's coming, ladies and gentlemen. It's coming. I just figured I don't want to spoil the name of this new show, of this new channel, until I'm ready, and the Discord is going to be named after this new show. And so I know it should have been a month ago. I thought October 1st we would have, uh, we would already be on the new channel and we'd have a, a Discord server and all of that. And so it's coming, it's coming. So all I can say is patience. It's definitely coming in the very near term. So uh, I want to get to it. Look, I would love to have it ready by November 1st. And I don't know. See, the other thing is I'm waiting for an intro, but I'm not going to worry about the intro. Once I have channel art logo and I have just kind of a basic intro and I can go with the new channel, we're moving to a new channel, folks. I don't know how that's going to work. I don't know if I'm going to lose all. No, I will lose my subs. Kid Toke says, so you don't lose your subs? Yeah, I'm losing all the subs. I got to hope that a lot of them follow me over to the new channel. So I will basically be starting over, guys. And VR Spry Guy says, Anthony should wait to start his new YouTube channel until he has his PC working perfectly. No, you know what? Um, I got to do it. As soon as I have my YouTube channel art set and I have like a little intro, like a, a you know, basic intro... And I just have to get a couple of things set up. I got to redo this this OBS so like it has some branding from the channel, all of that stuff. So it's just going to take a little while. Um, but I will be there very soon. So people are saying they'll be there. You won't lose your boy, yo. And uh, Noel DBZ says, I'll be there. Yeah, I'm hoping, mo I mean, most of the guys in chat that are really down for this show, I'm, I'm hoping you guys will be there. Um so I've seen YouTube channels change names, though. Or do you want to have two channels? You know what? It's a long story, Kid Toke. So what happened was when I first had this channel, um, people were clicking on my videos in different rooms in my house, signed into different YouTube accounts. I have kids, and they were like clicking on my videos and looking at it and stuff. And some somehow something got effed up. And I, do, I don't know what the whole story is, but you know what? I'm just going to move on from it. See, the name of this show, well, the name of this channel is VR Game Rankings, which is the name of a website. And I don't know that that's an ideal name for YouTube. So I have a different YouTube name that I think is a better name for YouTube. I think it's a better name for everything that I'm doing on YouTube. Um, but it's still going to be presented by VR Game Rankings. So VR Game Rankings is still the brand but the show name is going to be different. Kind of like Giant Bomb has a website, but the but the show is called the Giant Bombcast. Or you have, you know, whatever different websites, but their show is called something else. That's kind of how it's going to be. So it's all good. I'll start over from scratch and brand new and, you know, work up from the bottom and we'll just start over that way. So I think it's not going to be that big of a deal. I'm excited for it. It's going to be interesting. It will be exciting. Okay, Fluke Rogi says PSVR sold 915K in four months. So it was a little bit under one mil in four months. So I guess within five months, VR Game Rankings proudly presents the VR shit show. Yeah, pretty much. That's pretty much what it is. Giant bong, says Tezrim. Um, Kid Toke says, all good, Anth. I've been here before 100 subs. I'll be there also. Yeah, that's, and I'm thinking also is as soon as I start this up and start doing it, I mean, the little YouTube like thumbnails and all that, they'll appear in the typical places. And so people will see it. People will find it. So I don't, th I don't think it's going to take too long. for. I'll probably lose 
about, you know, I might lose a good thousand of my subs, but those are probably people that aren't watching this show on a regular basis anyway. So who cares? I'll start over from uh, ground zero and we'll work our way back up from the bottom to the top, you know. We'll work our way back. Um, it's going to happen. Okay, let's see. What other trailer can I put on here? You know what? My stomach is starting to growl. That is an unfortunate thing. Um, here is the Arca's path. When is the change coming? That is Whitway Studios. The change will come as soon as I'm done with my channel art. And I have uh, the YouTube channel art because I don't want to. I don't want to introduce my brand new channel with some crappy channel art and then change the channel art a week later. So it's going to wait until I have my channel art. I need the channel art, the YouTube, you know, the, the banner, and then I need to make. I'll be able to do my thumbnails once I have the channel art, and I need to kind of redo a little bit of like this OBS, like put my little logo somewhere, and you know, just do some minor stuff. It's not going to be that big. It's not going to be that big of a deal. It'll be all good. Um, where is the emergency banana? It's out in the other room. I think I'm just going to bounce off of this show pretty soon. Is what I'm going to have to do. Um, so let's see. So new show debuts November first. I'd like it too. I really would like it to debut on November 1st. That's Thursday, right? November 1st has some stuff going on. We got to get this Tetris effect. You know, we got to grab the demo and we only have four days to play the demo. That's coming on November 1st. The other thing I want to do, like every no, like every first of the month, I want to do a little montage on what are the best games in November. Let's cover, you know, what are all the big games in November. And there's a lot of games that are actually crowding into November. November is starting to heat up a little bit. You know, we just had Runes the Forgotten Path jump into November. There's a number of other things like the free to play Seeking Dawn, you know, is coming in November. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff in November. We got Darasene on PlayStation VR, other stuff. This Arcus Path is December 4th. So that is a December 4th day. Um, yeah, November 1st is Seeking Dawn free to play day. I wonder exactly how that's going to differ from the game that we paid big money for, you know, because I, I don't think I got a key for Seeking Dawn. I think I actually paid for Seeking Dawn. Uh, one of the few games I actually bought. All righty, guys. Well, let's see here. I can take a chat, a last little look at uh, the Vive subreddits or maybe Oculus subreddits. See if there's any last last second news popping off. Um, don't know that there's anything really new going on. Um, let's check PSVR subreddit because I know we looked at the Borderlands stuff, but uh, let's go ahead and go back here. <clears throat> This one guy's saying, I really need to stop doubting this subreddit. He's talking about Astrobot. Yeah, definitely do not doubt Astrobot. And this guy's saying, Astrobot, good for showing off VR? Hell yes, very good for showing off VR. Um, they should have that at malls, in my opinion. Tetris Effect, getting a limited time demo. We just, oh, the persistence. I need to get back into the persistence. I keep forgetting about it. Um, PlayStation VR has broken my PS4 twice. This guy sounds like he's got some personal issues going on because I doubt that happened. Um, don't own to the top. Limited physical copy release for those who need the box coming soon. You know, this is kind of interesting. They do have... <clears throat> there's a number of PSVR games that have very limited run. Oh, this is by Limited Run Games. So they're making this one of those limited run things. But To the Top on PSVR is actually pretty damn good. I mean, To the Top is one of VR's best games in general. And the PSVR version, not bad in the least. To the Top is pretty sweet. Uh, let me bounce back over to the Oculus subreddit. Let's see what folks are talking about here in chat. <clears throat> Started from the bottom. Now we are here. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. I'll just have to play some Drake in the background um what about medieval for ps4 you know i played medieval way back in the days on the original that was on the very first playstation right but it was kind of a late playstation one game medieval that was a really cool game and they are making that for uh ps4 but i don't know about any vr version what where's kevgret when you need him because wasn't there supposed to be Paris Games Week? I haven't heard of any announcements. Uh, maybe it's next week. VR Spry Guy says Roundtable tomorrow, Anthony? 
As far as I know, yes. Uh, actually, why don't I talk about that? So tomorrow around 9 a.m., roughly around that time, maybe 9, 10 a.m. or so, we should have our VR Roundtable episode. As far as I'm aware, it'll be episode 101. We just passed our 100th episode on that. And so that will be at 9 a.m. It will be live. Be sure to go to the VR Roundtable YouTube channel to check all of that. And then this show, the Sunday Fun Day show, our what we call the after party, it typically starts about... 10 minutes after the VR Roundtable show ends because sometimes I do need to grab an emergency banana or get a sip of water or something right before I start this show. So uh, we will, you know, Tesserum says, does VR Roundtable have a Discord server? No, we don't. Can you believe that? VR Roundtable doesn't have one. So stop crying about mine. <laughs> you know what? I will, we will have a Discord server. I promise you. The day that the new channel drops is the day we'll have a new Discord server and all of that stuff is coming soon. So I am excited about that. I want to move on. Let's get, the, it's not a big deal. Really, the show is going to basically be the exact same shit we already got going. But I've always kind of wanted to start fresh on this new channel. Eventually, maybe have some minor monetization going on, like Super Chat and that sort of thing. So I can get myself a Ryzen 2700X, a brand new motherboard, some brand new RAM and all, you know, so I can start playing the upgrade game and I can get a Samsung Odyssey Plus and stuff like that. If there's a little bit of money that's coming in, Although I'll probably have to report that to my unemployment, so that creates other issues. But it's going to take a while. You, you, you don't get monetized immediately, you know that? Um, it takes a while. Like you start a new channel, it's going to be like a month or two before I could ever get monetized. So that'll take time. Jim Hall says, Anthony, if you need any help with OBS, graphics, etc., let me know. Jim, yeah, I might be checking in with you. Uh, because I could certainly use some help on that in terms of like adding logos or anything like that. I have the logo and it will be added, but like the background and, and all of that, I might need a little bit of help with that. Uh, Conrad Lawrence says, Ryzen, did I miss something, Intel fanboy? Well, you know what? Um, I was in this, actually there's a thread. Where is it? Let's see if I can find the thread. There's actually a thread where they're talking about VR CPUs. Uh, where is this? Now I won't be able to find it, of course. But they're basically saying, so let's figure out CPUs and VR. You know, where? what's the smart play for CPUs and VR? Oh, here it is. What's the intelligent choice for CPU currently for VR? Let me go ahead and switch over to this. So this is on the Vive subreddit. So what's the intelligent choice for CPU currently for VR? And this guy's saying, is the best choice an i7-8700, a Ryzen 7 2700X? But this one guy came in and said, basically, unless you're streaming or doing video editing, you're probably not going to want the 2700X. But if you are streaming and if you are doing video editing, you might actually kind of want the 2700X. Well, I stream. We do a live stream every day. And I also want to start, I want to start streaming actual gameplay. Like I want to start adding some, like once I have this new channel going, I want to start doing some let's plays where I stream myself just playing random games and stuff. And so maybe the 2700X, because I'm going to be streaming and I'm going to do some more video editing and rendering and all that stuff, I'm maybe starting to come around. And the other thing about the 2700X the other bonus with the 2700X is I believe you don't have to get like a high-end aftermarket um, heat sink fan combination, which if you go the Intel route, you absolutely do. And isn't that another 40 bucks or whatever? So it's like whatever the price of the Intel CPU is, you got to add another 45 bucks on top of that, right? If you're going to... Um, you know, if you're going to go the Intel route. So add another 45 bucks on top. So then you're almost in the range of just getting a Ryzen 2700X because I believe, I thought I saw it on, uh, let me see if I can find it here, but I think Amazon has it for like 308 bucks, right? Ryzen 2700X. And then Phil Yarn was talking about some really good deal on um, where there was a combination where you got the motherboard and and the Ryzen for a pretty good deal. 
Um, so here it is right here. This is on Amazon.com. It's $309.89. So $309 bucks for just the processor, basically. I would still need a motherboard. I still need RAM and all of that. But yeah, I'm thinking about it. It's something I'm thinking about. It might be the my uh, my Christmas present to myself, basically, because I got the 1080 Ti, and you know I've overclocked my old ass i5 2500K. But you know, for situations like the Samsung Odyssey Plus, I can't play an Odyssey Plus right now because my Intel CPU doesn't have the proper extensions and all that. Um, Min Jae Sheen says, since GPUs are so expensive nowadays that investing in a better CPU would be more cost effective. Yeah, I just got my GPU, Min Jae. I had a 970, a GTX 970 forever. Just got a 1080 Ti. I got a used one. It was 415 bucks and not a bad deal. Now, Phil Yarn says the 2700X is less than half the price of the 9900K for the same core count, uh, the 9900K is just like 700 megahertz faster. Yeah, but it's not that simple, Phil Yarn, because like if you go into that thread where they're talking about the intelligent choice for what kind of CPU you get, one of the guys from um, H3 checks in, you know, from Rust, the developer Rust, he checks in and says, you know what, you still, you really want an 8700K is what he's saying, or better. He's saying, he not necessarily the Ryzen 2700X, but I still think it'll be, dude, it'll be a gigantic improvement over a 2011 year old, uh, yeah, I mean, not 2011 years old, but a CPU that is basically seven, eight years old from 2011. So I think it would be a great deal. Phil Yearn says, Newegg always had great deals on Ryzen. I'll keep you posted, Anth. Problem with Newegg is I'm in California. They do charge tax and shipping, but so does Amazon. So I guess it's the same deal. Um, so I guess either way. I do have a Fry's. I have a Fry's Electronics that is not very far from me. And sometimes they will, honestly, you know what I'm going to do, guys? I'm waiting for Black Friday. I'm not going to buy a motherboard or a CPU until Black Friday because I do have a Fry's. But damn, you know what the problem with Fry's is? Going to, going to Fry's on Black Friday is a freaking nightmare of nightmares. They will have a line that is no joke, like freaking five, six, seven hours long that you got to wait in line. So I'll basically go like at 10 p.m. that night before they're closed or something and hope they have some leftover Ryzen 2700X motherboard combos still left over or something like that because Fry's does have Black, Fr uh, Black Friday deals. So I do want to kind of check that out. Um, Phil Yearn says the 8700K is sometimes 300 bucks. So that might be the deal. Like, would you would you go with an 8700K or would you go Ryzen? Because the 8700K, you need a heat sink and a fan on top of that, right? Another 45 bucks on top of that, right? And the Ryzen doesn't need an aftermarket fan, right? You're good to go with the retail fan, something like that, right? I think that's what I've heard from some people. So that makes it a little bit tempting to me. Um, so I got to bounce out of here, folks. That has been our Saturday show. I will definitely be back tomorrow on Sunday. Be sure to go ahead and bounce over to the VR Roundtable YouTube channel because that's where I'll be at, at around 9 a.m. Pacific time. We will be doing some VR Roundtable and Steve is gonna be talking about all these things that he's been ordering lately. He's been spending a lot of money. His credit card has been active. And so I'm sure he'll be talking about that tomorrow. We'll probably talk about Witching Tower VR. We'll probably talk about the Zero Caliber demo. Lots of other stuff like that. So be sure to check that out on our VR Roundtable episode tomorrow. And then this show follows about 10 minutes after. Usually we end up around 11 a.m. roughly. Usually around that time. So probably 11 a.m. So see you guys tomorrow. Take it easy. Yeah, we will. We'll be talking about all of the Oculus kerfuffle. Yeah, we haven't talked at all about that. That's going to be the funnest part of our show tomorrow. The Oculus kerfuffle, ladies and gentlemen. That will be wonderful. I can't wait to talk about that. All right, guys. See you tomorrow. Take it easy. Later. Later.